choose which, and each case has the indicated property. And the first set, the first um, set of things here, are molecules and ions, and we want the smallest actual bond angle. Now, if we look at these, um, ammonia is AX3E. Okay, so sort of a bad looking ammonia, but um, four electron groups, three bonding, one lone pair. So this is an AX3E case. Uh, now let's compare it with NH2 minus. And NH2 minus looks like this, Lewis dot structure. It's got two lone pairs. And of course, this is negative ion, a negative ion overall. So um, the um, Shape class for this one is AX2E2. Okay, two, these are the two X's. These H's here are X's. The two lone pairs are the two E's. And then if we look at NH4+, It's a positive ion. And what is the shape class for a NH4 plus? A, X, 4. A, X, 4. A, X, 4. So what is the actual bond angle for an A, X, 4 case? 109.5 degrees tetrahedral angle. Okay, if we compare ammonia case here, the ideal bond angle is also 109 and a half degrees because there are four electron groups just like there are here. But it asks for the actual bond angle. So the actual bond angle is going to be affected by this lone pair here, repelling as it does the bonding pairs. So this angle right here is going to be less than 109.5 degrees. Okay, um, so the question is what's NH2 minus? With NH2 minus we have two lone pairs. With two lone pairs pushing on the bonding pairs, this angle here is now going to be much less than 109.5. Two lone pairs reduces the H and H bond angle more than one lone pair. So the smallest actual bond angle will be that for NH2 minus because it has two lone pairs um, whereas NH3 has one and NH4 plus has none. Does anyone have a question about that part of this workshop? Yes, please. On the NH2 minus? Mm-hmm. Um, because what is the uh, what is the geometry of four electron groups? It's always tetrahedral, isn't it? There's no fragment of a tetrahedral that's linear. That's the answer to your question. It's got to be angular, and the question is how? How? What's the bond angle going to end up being? And if there are two lone pairs, as we saw on this, you know they are. Lone pairs are big because they're only held by one nucleus. So we have this big thing up here pushing um, as it does on these and to make this angle smaller. Good question. Thank you. Good question. Thank you. Other questions on this? All right. Let's go on to the rest of this before we run out of the hour already. Larger dipole moment. 
So we have H2O and OF2. Um, if you've got this part erased up here, I, I'm going, uh, I mean, if you've got it written, I want to erase it so I'll have more room. Okay, so both of these, H2O and OF2, are gone. Sorry. Are AX2E2. Okay, so in the water molecule case, this angle will, of course, be less than 109 and a half degrees. Pretty much like that NH2 2 minus we just, uh, or NH2 minus we just looked at. But in this case, um, we have for the uh, OH bonds, we have bond polar vectors that point towards the oxygen because it has more electronegativity. We remember that. Also, in addition to that, we have the indications of the lone pairs here, um, which are each one of them contributes a, um, uh, a makes a contribution to the overall um, polarity of the molecule. So notice all of these bond vectors and lone pair vectors have a northward or an upwards component to them. So they're going to add um, to have a major n upwards um, dipole moment. Okay, But if we look at OF2, it has two lone pairs as well. They have upwards pointing vector contributions. But now, let's look at what happens in the OF bonds. They point towards the fluorines because the fluorines are the most electronegative element. So we end up having a vector in this direction and a vector in that direction. And that will make for a small dipole moment, whereas water has a larger dipole moment because its bond vectors and its lone pair vectors cooperate to make one big vector going up. So the, the larger dipole moment will go for water. Questions on that one? I hope it makes sense to you. You have to look at the direction of the bond vectors to make a, a comparison. Well, NO2 and CO2 is a little easier because CO2 is linear because it's an AX2 case. And NO2 is AX2E, so it's bent. And the linear case won't have any dipole moment at all. It'll have zero dipole moment. So NO2 will automatically, because it's a bent molecule, have a dipole moment, and that'll have to be the larger of the two. Okay. Questions on that one? Let's look at the last one. The GEF4 is an AX4 case. And we noticed um, that all of the cases, the polarity of all of the um, shape classes where you had the same atoms and atoms and no lone pairs on polar. AX2 was nonpolar, AX3 was nonpolar, AX4 is nonpolar, AX5 is nonpolar, and AX6 is nonpolar. So AX4 is one of those that's nonpolar. What about SEF4? Well, SEF4 has a lone pair on the selenium. It's like SF4. Okay, So we have bond vectors going this direction. We have bond vectors going this direction. And then we have a dipole, uh, I'm sorry, a lone pair here going that direction. But there isn't any reason to suspect that these perfectly balance. So uh, the, the dipole moment for the molecule will have some positive magnitude. And since this other one is nonpolar, um, this AX4E will be polar, may not be real polar, but it will be polar, and so it has a larger dipole moment. 